so once you enter the top of the Death Mountain area, you'll see that there are a bunch of flaming rocks that are falling from the sky, and we'll deal more with that in a moment. Uh, but as soon as you enter this upper area, then the Gorons that are up on the highest platform will communicate, they'll point to you, and apparently one of them is going to go tell the Elder. So he gets on top of the back of another one, and he uses him to propel himself up on top of the sledge. So this is a little clue that we will be able to use the Gorons to get up to these upper areas, and they're conveniently placed uh, as guards, but they are going to conveniently be our means of getting up into their own fortress, in a sense. <laughs> in any case, uh, as soon as you come into this lower area, all these uh, flaming rocks will actually start falling from the sky repeatedly. You want to just roll around to avoid getting hit by them, and you'll see this little cutscene in which this really large uh, flaming object just totally falls from the sky, and like, you know, Minda will say that this place looks really dangerous, and she'll ask if this is a traditional Death Mountain welcome. And she giggles. <laughs> so this rock is actually very important, and we will be dealing with this more later. So just log that away in your memory. Uh, we will be using it later. You want to head over to one of the Gorons, and you want to uh, like let it smack you with, while using your shield. And then uh, while it's punching and stuff like that, it's vulnerable. So just after it punches you, deflect it with your shield. And then you can either use a shield attack or uh, smack it with your sword. This will cause it to curl up into a ball. You'll be able to climb up on top of its back and then use it to propel yourself up. And with this Goron, I actually just had the worst luck. They, uh, the freaking boulders were like falling on me like every time that I got on top of this thing. Um, anyways, after it hit me several times, I finally was able to get up on top of the Goron for reals and um, you know, get up on top of the upper platform. Also, once you get finally get up there, there is a uh, there's actually a hot spring off to the to the right that um, you know we actually went there as a wolf and everything. But you can hop down there right now as in your human form. And you can use the hot water to um, heal yourself and everything. There's some Gorons down there too, but they won't harm you. In this area, there's a geyser that conveniently turns on or whatever starts blasting whenever you walk close, but as soon as you're away from it, it'll stop blowing. Uh, but it'll always be blowing whenever you're near to it, so I think it hates you. If you want to use the iron boots to sneak past it. And once you get up here, you want to equip your iron boots again because there is a Goron that'll appear around the corner. You want to use A to uh, throw it behind you. So once again, you want, you'll see that there's another Goron, so get ready to grab it and toss it off to the side. So once they're both out of the way, you'll be able to take off your iron boots and continue working your way upwards. Uh, you can grab the recovery hearts that come out of the barrels or whatever, and then there's also probably a recovery heart underneath this rock that is coming up ahead right there. Uh, I did not grab that one. Up ahead there are two Gorons right in a row, you want to use them to get up here, and the second one will like hit you no matter what, I think, so like as soon as you land it'll like totally punch you. So that's really lame. Just go ahead and punch this one too and you'll be able to use it to get up onto the final platform. Up here there are two more barrels, you can slash them up and they contain recovery hearts, so you'll be able to get to full health before we enter the next area. Once you've gathered those, you want to head into this next room, and you'll see that there is a large room, and as soon as you head forward, it'll start the cinema in which all the Gorons turn to you, and they start trying to attack you. Uh, so they'll rush forward, and just before they get to Link, um, then a voice will call out to them to stop. Uh, there's obviously no way we could take that many Gorons at once, uh, and this new character will come in and say that they shouldn't all gang up on you, so he'll call them all Little Brothers. So as Link walks forward, uh, the new Goron will introduce himself as one of the Goron elders. His name is Gor Koron. Uh, so he says that he is leading the tribe in the place of their patriarch Darbus, uh, who is off somewhere else. And he says that you are strong for a human, uh, but he will never be able to let you inside the mines unless... And uh, here Link like gives him a challenging look. I guess stare him down, and so Gor Koron gets excited. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. He smiles. He goes on to have a serious face, and he says that he will be willing to consider it if uh, you will have a contest of power. So, this will initiate the sumo wrestling match. Apparently, rock people play sumo wrestling, or whatever. Um, so here, then they will face off. And um, now, as you know, though, on our way up Death Mountain, you can't uh, do anything with the Gorons unless you are wearing the iron boots. And so, right now, Link is not wearing the iron boots. So most, most likely, unless you knew what was going to happen, you did not put them on before you entered the room. Um, but, so if you start this sumo wrestling match without the iron boots, he would just totally knock you back. Man. So that's kind of lame, and Darbus, or uh, Gorkoron will look kind of surprised at you. And he'll say that you are too light, so it's just a clue that you need to put on the iron boots. So here you'll put them on right in front of him, and I guess he just doesn't notice, or maybe he just doesn't care. 
in any case, um, mm -hmm. he'll let you try again. So go ahead and challenge him one more time, and we'll be able to fight Gorkoron. So if you mess up again, then he'll just let you keep trying. So don't worry too much if you fail or whatnot, because you can always try again. You don't actually lose anything for uh, failing. You can just keep trying over and over again. So. Um, and, you know, there's actually just a lot of luck involved in this, you know, because it's like rock, paper, scissors, basically. Because you have, you know, a grab will always beat a slap, a slap will always beat a dodge, and a dodge will always beat a grab. So, you know, it's one out of three chance that you'll get them, or one out of three chance that you won't. If you both do the same thing, then it doesn't count as anything. So, um, so anyways, you just kind of keep going back and forth, and uh, like you can see this battle, we're actually really even. And this battle with Gorakoron or whatever is a lot harder than that training we did with Mirabeau, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know, it's just maybe he's luckier or something, or maybe he just has more strategy. Um, it doesn't seem quite as random as it did uh, when fighting Mirabeau. So you can see like for this battle, I, we're actually pretty even, but I actually lose this battle. Um, the next one I do is I'm really lucky and I like totally maul him in just a few seconds. So um, I'm just leaving this one in here so you can see kind of what more one of the intense battles is like, I guess. Um, but you'll probably experience one of those yourself. So if you fail a couple times, don't be too surprised. I mean, I'm pretty good at this, but I totally got slaughtered there, I guess, eventually. But I was holding out on my own for pretty good. So just challenge him again if you do mess up or whatnot, and uh, you know, then you can try again. So, like I say, there's no downside to trying again or whatnot, so don't feel too bad if you mess up. So here, this one, I'm just totally lucky. I'm not really sure what the deal is, but I just totally slaughter him. Just gets... just totally knock him out of the side here. So once you finally defeat him, he'll fall to the ground. He'll tell you that you are quick and have sharp eyes and such. Uh, so he says you want to put those to use, and he means like for you to go into the Goron Mines, which is what we were after anyways. Um, I think it's kind of dumb, you know, he says that you are, you have sharp eyes and everything, so that means that you should go to the mines. And how does playing a game that's basically rock, paper, scissors, like, mean that you have sharp eyes and strength and stuff? I don't know. That just seems dumb to me. <laughs> it's totally random. He will go on to say that, you know, all the elders went into the Goron Mines because they were, you know, they were entrusted this, um, this dark power that was trusted to them by the light spirits, and uh, their patriarch, Darbus, he touched the the dark power, and it turned him into this monster and stuff, so uh, it made the eruptions grow more frequent and stuff, and uh, they took all their strength to seal him away, so they actually sealed Darbus within the Goron Mines. So they, he asked you to go ahead and go and aid Darbus. Uh, he says the spirits must have guarded you there, and he asked you on behalf of the whole Goron tribe to go do this for them. So, we're of course going to do it. Um, so he's now going to order the guards to let you pass. So with that, we're going to enter the Goron Mines. There's nothing left we have to do here. So thank you for joining me. That's the end of this chapter. So join me for the next one. We will tackle the Goron Mines.